But now you've come along And you light up my life You give me hope Dr. Papacanola was a pioneer in cytology and early cancer detection. In 1923, he first described the technique of gathering cellular debris from the lining of the vaginal tract and smearing it on a glass slide for microscopic examination as a way to identify cervical cancer, after he himself discovering that abnormal cancer cells could plainly be observed while he was examining vaginal fluid under a microscope. Upon this discovery, Dr. Papacanola formulated his low-cost, easily performed screening test for early detection of cancerous and precancerous cells. What's with all these women with these cancers? There must be some way to detect these cancers. Of course! And thus, the pap smear was born. Although Dr. Papacanola first formally introduced the pap smear in 1928, it was not recognized for its importance by the scientific community until 1943, when alongside fellow gynecologist Herbert Trout, he published the book Diagnosis of Uterine Cancer by the Vaginal Smear, detailing the technique and value of vaginal smear analysis. Since its inception, the pap smear has spread tremendously. Approximately 50 million pap smears are performed each year in the United States, and the death rate attributed to cervical cancer has declined a dramatic 74% since 1955. According to the American Cancer Society, it was estimated that almost 12,000 cases of invasive cervical cancer were diagnosed in 2008, and about 4,000 of these women died because of it. With a little math, you find that means early detection of cervical cancer with pap smears has potentially saved over 600,000 women's lives in the past 50 years. That's roughly the population of Seattle. You know, if, if it was full of women. Cervical cancer was once one of the leading causes of cancer death for American women. But thanks to the ever-growing use of the pap smear, the death rate for cervical cancer continues to decline about 4% every year. look just fine. Um, we spotted an abnormal cell. It was rude, but not malignant. It's very naughty. So it's nothing to be worried about. So yeah, uh, we're done here for today. Now, uh... Remember to schedule your next pap smear at a time when you are not menstruating, as the presence of blood cells may interfere with test results. However, if you're experiencing abnormal vaginal bleeding, a pap smear may be able to help determine the cause. Myself, like many physicians, recommend not using douches, vaginal medications, or tampons for at least 24 to 48 hours prior to having a pap smear. That's prior. And according to the American Cancer Association, because we all listen to them, the ideal time for a woman to have a pap smear is five days after her menstrual period has ended. So, uh, go ahead and get dressed. Okay. <laughs> oh! Oh! 
Well, we hope you've enjoyed our little adventure and found it as enlightening as we have found it rewarding. It's a little chilly out, so uh, I'm going to head in and warm up. In the meantime, ladies, stay safe. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see. Troubles are all the same You wanna be where everybody knows your name You wanna go where people know People are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name Yeah. <laughs>